time. So, so evening and welcome to Ultrabook News, the live, big live Ultrabook session tonight with the uh, UX31, the Asus, uh, sorry, the Asus UX31, uh, the Acer S3 and the Toshiba Z830 Ultrabooks. That's the three 13-inch devices with the SD card. Uh, some of you are interested in the SD card photographers, videographers, we're going to spend two and a half hours tonight going through all this stuff. The YouTube video won't be two and a half hours long because I'm going to dash through um, overviews of the devices and then there'll be a series of videos on YouTube that you can watch in this series that will uh, cover things like video performance, um, gaming performance, uh, screen, noise, heat, everything you can think of. A full review tonight on YouTube. But first, UX31 uh, is uh, sponsored by myself. I actually put down the money for it today and the reason I put down the money for it today is because I actually tried it out and found that the keyboard wasn't as bad as I thought it might be so there's a lot of news on forums about bad keyboards on the UX21, UX31, I experienced bad keyboard on the UX21 but because I tried this out and the keyboard wasn't so bad I went for it, I've put 1200 euros down on this, it's the uh, Core i7 version and we'll see how it goes. I may take it back, I may not, but let me give you a round, uh, roundabout view on it. Of course, you, you've seen this in, in, in videos, I hope. It's the UX21 Ultrabook from Asus with the metallic finish, the spun concentric, oh, how many times does Johnny Chen have to go on about this? Spun concentric rings to change your mindset and yeah, Zenbook is the uh, the other name they give to it. So obviously there's a fair bit of marketing going on around that. But come on, let's have a look at the device. At the front, three millimeters. At the back, what is the, uh, I think it's something like 17 millimeters. At the back, I'm just quickly pulling up the specs for you. At the back, it's uh, 18 millimeters. So really, really thin and light. Looks like another device that's very thin and light, right? That runs at OS X. There's no doubt that this is very, very close in design to the MacBook Air. How they get away with it, I don't know. I suspect someone has a word, has had a word with someone along the way and underwritten this, and it might have been Intel because they clearly would have had a big involvement in the original MacBook Air design. So maybe they've uh, said, "Yep, okay, we helped you with the MacBook Air. You let us make stuff that looks like it." Who knows? Ports, USB two at the back, headset port, I believe. I don't think it's a headphone, but we will check that. And an SDHC, at least an SDHC. I'm not sure. It might even be SDXC, uh, full size at the at the front. That's important for, for photographers and for people putting in videos and stuff like that. Across the back, nothing at all. It's beautiful finish. USB three on the right hand side at the back, DC power in, and I'll show you a nice feature on the AC power supply in a minute. And then we've got uh, mini VGA, the adapter is included, and micro HDMI. So if you're looking to take this out to do presentations, you will need to take the adapter cable. See if I can get a little bit closer on that, um, and I'll show the adapter cable in the minute. And that's pretty much it. Look un underneath, it's absolutely clean, and there's a very, very tiny serial number here. Where's the uh, Microsoft uh, license sticker it's here it's on the power brick I don't know quite how they got permission to do that but all the UX range have the sticker on the power brick and it's a power brick that has a, a changeable adapter um, plug this one's European obviously it's really nice wall blister type and it's got a long light cable on it and on the end of the cable is a charging light so um, it charges orange when it's charging and green when it's fully charged or unplugged so that's really really helpful it has worked on this one I know some people have uh, reported that it's not working for them but on this one it does work did a full charge this evening although if you wiggle, wiggle it about you can get it to go green when it's actually still charging so maybe there's a little uh, issue inside the, the the connector header there but really nice and light that's good good for mobility um, let's quickly look at the uh, adapter ports dun, dun, dun. they come in a nice little case it's not leather it's a kind of a webbing so there's the VGA adapter so mini VGA to VGA adapter it's not a USB VGA but this is a USB um, to oh yeah so okay this is a uh, mini USB 2 to Ethernet 10100 adapter so useful. So what you'll notice is missing is the HDMI cable. So you need to buy micro HDMI to normal HDMI cable if you want to use the HDMI. So they come in a little case there, and there's another little case here, 
which is uh, I could really really do a you know 2009 video of the MacBook Air being launched like that so <laughs> nice case though but it all adds up in weight to about 1.5 1.6 kilos so this is 1.3 kilos okay so inside we've got Core i7 4 gigs of RAM we've got uh, 128 gig uh, SSD and we've got the 13 inch screen which is um, has a unique resolution among ultrabooks it's 1600 by 900 resolution and that is really really quite something I thought I was pretty happy with the 3066 by 768 of the of the standard ultrabooks but this really is something it just pushes the PPI up to the sort of limits of your ad average eye so you actually get quite a lot of advantage you can leave the font sizes as they are and get really get a lot of a lot more to the point where you can run two windows side by side and copy and paste between the two and that I think is quite important for people that are doing development work um, editing work that you can have two windows side by side side I think that's uh, really important just zooming in then we've got uh, speakers in this uh, f uh, sorry speakers in the grill behind the grill here plus the uh, fan output fan input is through the keyboard I believe and the keyboard is a plastic metallic uh, finish. It's not fully metal, I don't believe. But the outside is, and it feels really nice. It looks really nice. It's not a fingerprint magnet, but I think it would get quite smudgy quite quickly. So although it won't show up fingerprints instantly, it'll probably get dirty over time. And it doesn't seem to be treated, so watch out for scratches. Um, I've seen some UX31s on the road over the last months that had some big scratches down the side. So you want to be a little bit careful about that. Um, there's integrated uh, power button on the keyboard here with a light. You'll go to hit that thinking it's the delete key and you'll just stop short because the blue light will stop you. It works. The blue light really works stopping you from turning the device off when you're going to delete something. There's a light on the caps lock button, a light on the Wi-Fi button, there's also brightness, uh, screen off, screen output, touchpad off, uh, volume and then we've got another couple of shortcut keys for the um, Asus uh, battery modes, um, the screen gamma settings, there's about four or five settings you can have as presets and you can switch the camera on and off as well. So just uh, comments then very quickly and um, this is just a brief sort of overview to start with. Comments on the keyboard, as I mentioned uh, before this I'm finding a lot better than UX21. Now is the UX21 or the UX21 I had was that a faulty device or is this one somehow magically uh, causing me to have a different angle on typing I don't know it's a def definitely a wider spread of hands so that maybe there's a different angle of attack that comes with the keys and maybe it's working better on the UX31 I don't know but I'm definitely working better on this keyboard than the UX21 UX21 keyboard for me was a showstopper is not on this UX31 having said that it's not perfect I do still, I am still, if I try and do it uh, intentionally, hit the corner, push the key down and it won't register. Um, the only thing that happens unintentionally is that sometimes if you hit the corner of the space bar it doesn't register. So you need to sort of change a little bit the way you uh, hit the space button. The mouse pad, uh, another uh, bone of contention amongst uh, forums, um, forum members around, around the net is that this is not very good. This is the Senelic Senel <laughs> uh, touchpad. When I got it out of the box, it was terrible. Uh, I did the Asus update. It's now great. Um, when I say terrible to great, the two-finger scrolling on it was really bad. Two-finger scrolling on it now is nice and smooth. You still can wander up from the touch button area into the touch pad area, so you have to be a little bit careful about that. And you can also, if you're not careful, hit your wrist on the side. Um, those are things you have to look for anyway on on big touch pads. So I'm not uh, having tried a lot of the other devices. It's only the ones with the smaller touch pads that get over that problem. And then with a the smaller touch pad, the multi-touch gestures aren't so enjoyable or easy to use. Uh, the other thing is glossy screen on this one and we've got a webcam with a mic and a warning light on that as well okay there's your brief overview of the UX31 uh, 
I'll leave it there for this one because I want to pop this one up on, on YouTube, stop the recording and we'll do another in-depth video. We're going to do the Toshiba's at 8.30 next. So uh, hop on to part two of the uh, YouTube videos if you're watching this series. And don't forget, this is uh, Ultrabook News. Uh, we're at Ultrabook News on Twitter and we're on Facebook at slash Ultrabook News. Thanks for watching part one.